Okay, round two. Looks like a keeper. I'd say keep that one, Maria. I'm going to keep it, Pat. All right. So, uh, yeah, you were asking before about my millimeter strategy. Yeah. And, yes, I believe eight drops are generally superior. Um, eight drops also are <laughs> times, or at least eight drops are more likely than other drops to have answers. So there's creatures like Puppet Guard Sweepers that'll bounce your opponent's stuff. There's Celestial Archon that will exile a um, So if there's something that you need to deal with, something that's unblockable, or maybe it has Swamp Walked or something, and it's just wrecking you, usually you want to make an 8-drop. Okay. Look at this piece of shit. Mm, yep, that's pretty bad. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, We're you off might to be able to, poop start. You might be able to trigger that once or twice. But, uh, yeah, it's gonna be, it's probably just gonna be a point or something. He's got this guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. That thing gets pumped up if you have seven points, but that's probably not gonna happen. Unless you find some way to drop it. That probably won't be until later in the game. Yeah. Now we'll make a three drop. And, oh, we get a threshold guy. Cool. Oh, look at that. Threshold gets more power if there's seven more cards in my grave. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I mean, it can do diff different things, but the ability is only turned on. Uh, yeah, if we get seven or more cards in the graveyard, which we will eventually, so we don't want to block here. Because we can just attack him back for two. Probably get something here that can just eat his tutu. Should I get rid of this island yet again, or no? Hang on to it. Uh, yeah, just ditch it for us. In case we get something with the sweet ability, I'd like to be able to play one of each. Sweet, Three, two, three to fire, and then attack with our tutu. All right. Since we don't want to block with it, um, if we have scary ants, we're not going to block it either. He can pump it if he wants. So if you take a look at the ants, it is uh, you can spend a colorless to pump it to potentially make that a five if you wanted to. Wow. But that means he would have to uh, skip his turn. Yeah. Just to do that. Mm, he's thinking about attacking with it. In which case, you know, maybe we just block with like, O one. So yeah, we'll just take two here. Bye. We can trade off the 2-2 if we need to because a 4-4 four four is not going to be very relevant in the late game. Whoa! Whoa. Right. So we really want a black creature to block that. We do have um, the Glaze Fiend which can jump it at some point. Seems incredibly likely. Love this forest. Side note. Now we can pitch uh, an island or planes. Ooh, okay. So when it enters the battle, it deals twice damage to target creature player equal to twice the number of goblins it devoured. Uh, we have no goblins, right? Dang it. Um, hmm. So, <laughs> this is an interesting choice because we, I mean, we'd like to devour our O1, but yeah. then we take away our chump locker. Uh, I think we're probably going to devour our 2-2 two, two, just because making a flyer is better. So if we attack this turn for 3 and put him at 19, then hmm, even if we make it a 6-6, six, six, um, let's see, if we, if we let's see, if we make it a 5-5, five, five, he'll go to 19, and then we'll have 8 power flyers, which means he'll be on a 3-turn clock. Um, if we put him at to 9... Then it's still a three turn clock, right? Yeah. We'll put him to 19 and then we'll have nine power flyers. So, yeah, I think just sack the 2 2 and then attack with our 3 2. Okay. If you wondered what that screaming noise in the background is, it is tea that Ben has made. Whoa, what? Uh, you devoured incorrectly. I guess I did. Oh, 
That was oh, well. weird. Sorry. Uh -huh. So I think we block his carrion ants with our 2-2. Two -two. Just to make him do it? Just to make him do it. Yeah. I mean, if he's making a 4-drop instead of a 6-drop this turn, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, at some point, we can jump his 6-3, but there's not really a reason to do that right now. Yeah. I mean, if I had like a 4-4, if we had like a 4-4 blocker or something on the ground, I definitely would have blocked his ants just to make him do it. I guess um, he can kind of try to aggro us out. Yes, so this is a feature which makes our stuff more difficult to cast. But we're not casting anything, so it does nothing. What are we doing? We're using an activated ability in a Momir that creates a copy of creatures. Ooh! Ooh. All right, five so five dragon. Just attack with both our flyers. Leg. So we'll attack for seven, put him at twelve. And next turn we'll have exactly twelve. Um, and we can also destroy an artifact if we want to. <laughs> He gets an artifact flyer, we'll yeah. just kill it, and then destroy him. I like that guy's name, Halo Hunter. Uh, I guess we can also, like... Ooh. This guy's pretty good. Avenger of Zendikar makes a bunch of plants. And then he has landfall, so that whenever you play a land, all your plants get plus one, plus one counters. Oh yeah. So it's a really good seven drop, but uh, yeah, it's not, it doesn't do anything. Should we block this thing? Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter because we're going to win next turn. All right. Uh, I guess we just play a land. Yeah, whatever. Let's see. Let's double check our math. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right. Let's do it. Some extra yeah. value. Does as you'll notice, we got flyers, and our opponent did not did not get flyers. So that's the key. That is the key. Although he did have um, he did have that six three intimidation. Intimidate's also good. Really get in for a lot. Force to make up trades just because they don't clash the colors. Look at this island flush here. Two two. Yeah. As soon as he gets there, white or blue creature is going to be a 1 1. Dumb. So uh, we will be trading this off basically for anything as soon as possible. Yep. Oh, uh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> it's an ATOG. It's a Thaumatog. So he can add in the land to give that plus one plus one. That seems like a bad idea. Bad idea, but um, it could be relevant. Yeah, yeah. Nope. It could be irrelevant. Um, in the game. He's going to alpha strike us. Potentially be a 9-9. Oh, I get it. Okay. We've got a 4-4 four four that's pretty good. And, uh, we basically turned on... Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, damn it. This is actually... I usually uh, avoid playing swamps. Oh, really? Yeah, until, um, until my opponent has made a 4-drop. Because oh. there are several four drop swamp blockers. Okay. Um, mm, I guess pitch our swamp. Mm. Ooh. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's fun. Uh, so we can attack with our two. Five. Uh, I guess there's no reason to. No. Check out the sweet uh, escape slashes <laughs> on this sleeping dragon. <laughs> Why are they there? Conming slash. Parentheses, sleeping dragon slash parentheses. See, Maria, when you program. Oh, wow. Okay. So, what does this thing do? When it dies, destroy all non land permanents that can't be regenerated. So, yeah. That's I mean, pretty good. We probably need to, like, triple block. Him yeah. If he chooses to attack, he might not. He has Swamp Walker up. That thing's big enough to allow it to live. So, yeah, I'd play out a forest and uh, make a five. Swamp. Uh, sure. It doesn't really matter at Whoa. This point. 
What? Horsemanship! <gasps> it's happened! We have horsemanship. All right, we can't attack this turn. Uh, if he attacks with his child, that's a decision to make. Because he has a 2 4 unblockable, a 3 5 unblockable, but we can't really afford yeah. to take 6 damage from him. Well, hold on, let's see. If he attacks us for 8 and knocks us down to 14, then we attack back for. Uh, I guess he's going to make a creature. Mm. We're just in a tough, tough, rough shape spot here. Yeah. And I think we just. Yeah. Couldn't we just triple block with these three gentlemen? Yeah, but when the child dies. Oh, everything dies. It's wrathing the whole board. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think we just want to do it. Yep, just All triple. Right. Quadruple block it. Goodbye. Forever. Mm, let's see. Wait, let's make sure we know what this ability does. It says, when it dies, destroy all non land permanents. They can't be regenerated. Yeah. All right. That's fine. There was some argument that we could have just skipped making a five drop. But then he's going to make something else, too. Yep. So we reset, and then he gets to make the first drop. Which is annoying. Just a four four though. Yep, play, play planes. planes. Yep. And we got rid of his swamp walker, so. Yeah. Mm, cool. Six four. Yep. So we'll see what he makes here. Oh. Oops. He's pro uh, yeah, he's going to attack first and make us decide. Uh, if we block it. If we block it. Yeah. If we don't. Nope. No. Because if he gets a 6-6, six, six, he's attacking. And then he has to make an unfavorable trade. And then we're pretty likely to get a 5-toughness creature this turn. 3-3. So, yeah, so we just make a drop. He was hoping that we would make a bad decision, but... Um, uh, we don't make bad decisions. Either. Well, he had to make a bad decision, too, because of that. Oh, this is a sweet one. So he has to discard. Yep. Cool. Um, yeah, so I think now we just attack. Oh, our... look at... He chatted with us, and he wrote, Da fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Smell me, man. Is Everything he, is defunct. Is he just outraged that he has to discard a card? And they'll be making Carpulsion, Carplusion Giants for the rest of the game? <laughs> so we could hold the 6 4 back if we wanted to, but I think we just get in. If he keeps attacking with his 4 4, we can probably just keep attacking with his 6 4. So we're basically trading 6 damage for 4 here. So I think that's good, even though. Um, yeah. We're also up by a land, so. This is a good game for <laughs> figuring out best situations in combat. Yeah, okay. Shoot. So you get to reach guy now that trumps our dragon. But we're still not going to block his 4-4. Four, four. I mean, if you'll notice, now we can just we can just attack with our 6-4 again. Yeah. He's going to block his reach guy. It's too valuable. We got eight drop. Oh yeah, nine, nine we got trample. a real eight drop there. Yep. So just attack with a six four. Okay. Probably just take six. Yep. Yeah. Eventually he's gonna get something that can do that, or he'll just go back to his Iname. This legendary spirit. Tree. It is a tree. He has Ooh. an eight eight trample. Oh, so finally his three giant comes in handy because this guy only is an eight eight. Oh, if you have another, another giant. giant. But uh, when we have a scarred mouth, we basically beat it. Although we can't really attack with our scarred mouth because we don't want to trade it for a stupid five drop or a seven drop. Oh, 
Oh, buddy. All right, Pat's turn. Okay. I don't know if you know this card, Maria. No, I don't. But it is very, very good. Uh, Pat's turn to him, and then why don't you just read it for the guests? Sure. Whenever Lorthos, the Tide Maker, attacks, you may pay eight. If you do, tap up to eight target permanents. Those permanents don't have to <laughs> controllers on tap steps. <laughs> sure. So as long as you do this right, Maria, okay. you win. Because <laughs> you can tap down all his creatures. Everything. Yeah. And we can just deck. Although really, we really need to deck it. Lorthos and more things, so. so just do it now? Yep, just attack. Oh, just attack. Yes, it is your trigger ability when you attack. Everybody? Yep, do it. There they go. Alright, so make sure to target all five of his creatures and then three of his lands. All three of his swamps, say. Doesn't really matter since we're just going to win. And then press OK. Don't press cancel. <laughs> Tap eight mana and then press OK. I did it. Oh my god. You did it, Maria. Get your first Lorthos skill. How does it feel? Real good. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's down wrong too. Yeah, Lorthos. <laughs> this is a real beating. Lorthos is a card that makes me say the fuck. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to the finals. We're going to the finals. We'll see you real shortly. We'll either be playing Diablo Wrist or TPT Bahamut. <laughs> Look out, you guys.